Bonjour from the French Alps. Yes, bonjour. I mean, how incredible is this? We have just climbed to a little summit here on the mountain. You're going to see skiers all around me. This view behind me. Can we talk about the view? I've never seen anything like this. I've skied in the States before and I mean, it's wonderful. But when you get here, it is majestic. That's the word that keeps coming to my mind over and over again. It is absolutely breathtaking everywhere you turn from leaving your room to walking out of a restaurant to going up a ski lift to being in a gondola. It's stunning and I've been taking so many pictures but the pictures just don't give it justice. There's nothing quite like this. It's heavenly. Uh, so this episode is going to be on top of the Alps um, in a beautiful Alpe de Hughes. We're here for the music festival, Tomorrowland Music Festival. I don't know if any of you know about Tomorrowland. A lot of you don't, some of you do. It's this amazing festival and they do, they do them all over the world. I've, I've heard that the Belgium one is like next level and this one is right up there too in the French Alps. They do this annually. And it's basically the best DJs in the world. And they all come here and they have shows throughout the week. Um, on the mountaintop, they have them in different venues, at the base, in beautiful big tents. The whole resort area is basically Tomorrowland. In the evenings, like there's laser shows and there's fireworks and the music is everywhere. And it's absolutely amazing. I have kind of fallen in love with EDM music. I never really listened to it. Um, but as I started working out and running and changing up my playlist, Douglas was like, you've got to try EDM music when you run and when you work out. And I'm like, what is EDM music? And I started listening to it and I really fell in love with it. It's so fantastic. Um, basically they'll take great songs like I love Justin Bieber, Michael Jackson, um, and they'll kind of remix them. And it's kind of been trending. I've seen it on Instagram, but it really, it was started like in our era. It started like in this, the eighties and and um, it's, it's really finally caught on for me and I love it. So we're here for Tomorrowland. Uh, we went to a couple of the venues on the mountain this week and it was unbelievable. They basically carve out like an igloo and build tents in this igloo of sorts. There's one to my left right over here and um, it's fantastic. And the music kind of being tucked into the snow is so loud. It's so amazing and the DJs have been unbelievable. We're dancing in the snow. We're on the Alps. I mean, it's, I just keep looking around. I'm like, this is not real, uh, but it is real. And I feel like I'm living a dream, a dream, honestly, that I never even dared to dream. I never had the courage to dream this big. And I want to talk about that today on this episode. Um, let's back up a bit. So here we are in the French Alps. How did we get here? A lot of you that are following us on chatting with Chaz and Linden and Flaxco, the questions and the DMs and the comments are, why are you there? How did you get there? We want your itinerary. Tell us everything. So I thought today I'd kind of tell you everything. And when we started, where we've been and what we're doing. And then I also want to share kind of what I have been feeling since I've been in the Alps, especially. I had a podcast from Milan, from our rooftop, um, in our hotel and I was sharing a lot about in our last episode about kind of just feeling like I'm in a zone of happiness and being grateful and you know going through the hard things and when you get to these moments you you appreciate you know everywhere you've been everything you've been through and where you've been and then while I've been in the Alps I've just felt another kind of thought about you know climbing mountains and reaching you know your summit and kind of getting to a place on the mountain where you can sit and you can rest and you can breathe. Um, and so we're going to talk about that too. But let's start with diving into all things travel because that's been a lot of the questions I've had. We started in Atlanta, Georgia, and we flew to Newark. Uh, we fly into Newark from Atlanta to get to um, a plane, um, an airline called La Company. And it's a great airline. Um, let me just give you a little backdrop. When we went to Europe in the fall, 
we flew first class, you know, the pods. Um, I've never done that before, but we, we did that and we did it with Delta and it was astronomical. I'm not even going to say how much it cost, but it's, it was a lot. And I thought, is that normal? Cause I've never flown like that. Um, and so a friend of Douglas's was telling him about this airline. He's like, it's basically business class, the entire plane, it's pods. It's basically first class. Um, but there's only like 60 seats and it's, like a quarter of the price. So we booked that airline when we went to Paris in December and it was a great experience. So we booked again um, as we came to the French Alps. Um, it does not fly directly into French Alps because it's a smaller airline. It only goes to certain places like I think Amsterdam's one, Paris, Milan. Um, so we thought let's fly from Atlanta to Newark. We pick up the company in Newark and then let's pick a destination that they fly to and we'll start there for this journey to the Alps. So we decided to go to Milan because we've been to Paris. We went to Paris, you know, as of late, but we're going to fly out of Paris. So um, we started in Milan flew from Newark to, to Milan, got to Milan like on a Wednesday, on a Tuesday, Tuesday. Gosh, it's like, you know, when you're on vacation, you can't even get your day straight. I'm like, what day is it? What time is it? I have no idea. Um, so we got there on a Tuesday. We got there kind of mid afternoon and we went hard. I mean, we checked in, we changed up, we hit the city and Milan was magical. And Milan is everything you think of. This is a girl that didn't really ever travel until last year, never even had a passport for some of you that just might be tuning in until last year. I'm 50 years old. That's kind of crazy. Um, so once I got that passport, we started stamping it. <laughs> and um, But everything I pictured Milan to be, this beautiful fashion, city of fashion and architecture and beautiful people dressed elegantly everywhere, cathedrals and shops and beautiful sidewalk cafes. Cafes. It was all of that and more. I loved Milan. Um, we we got there. We we went to lunch. We um, went to a cathedral. We climbed this beautiful cathedral to the rooftop. We were there for sunset. I mean, that alone was unbelievable. An experience I'll never forget. And then. Um, it was just an amazing day. Again, climbing something and getting to the top and seeing something beautiful. We saw this, the whole city of Milan. Um, we woke up the next morning, Wednesday. We decided let's run through Milan. You know, we love to run. I love to run. So we went on a great five mile run all through the city. We went through this beautiful park with a castle in it, a castle in it in the middle of the city. Yes. And then we went over a moat. <laughs> I was just like, how, how is this possible? We're running through Milan, through a castle and I just had a smile on my face like you've never seen it just it was a permigrant I mean Douglas would look at me and I, he, I would be behind him and I just had this big smile and then I'd just be looking around and he's like come on come on I'm like I just I, I'm taking in what I'm seeing it was so surreal to be running through Milan um, on that run we ran into another beautiful cathedral and there was a mass going on and we said a little prayer and it was just it, when does that happen? When are you running and you go into a mass and it's just a holy moment in a beautiful old cathedral? Um, then we went back to the hotel. We had a cappuccino on the terrace. And I mean, it was, it was just amazing. I'm really trying to take in all the moments and really think about what is happening instead of like when you get home, you're like, I can't believe we did that. I'm really trying to take it in. So Milan was fantastic. Um, Thursday was... Um, uh, another fantastic day in Milan. I, again, did a lot of shopping, walked around, um, went to a really cool neighborhood, Berea. So if you go to Milan, you should definitely walk to that neighborhood. A lot of cafes, little shops, and the boys, Douglas is here and his kids are here. Um, we're looking at watches, a lot of different watch shops. Um, so that was a beautiful day as well. And then um, Douglas's kids were joining us. So his daughter was coming in Friday. So on Friday, we all connected. Um, and headed to the French Alps. So we rented a car when we got to Milan because we knew we were gonna make this journey to the French Alps. It's about a four and a half hour, five if you stop for lunch like we did, to 
um, Alpe de Hughes. So we got in our car, we started this drive. You know, you're driving about an hour, getting through Milan, getting through kind of the country outside of Milan and then to the foothills of the Alps. You start seeing them about an hour into the drive, hour and a half into the drive, and I'm like, wow. This is unbelievable. And then you start driving through them and you're literally driving through mountains, on top of mountains, on the side of mountains, cliffs. I mean, it was unreal, the drive. So just the journey to Alpa de Hughes was unforgettable. Um, again, really trying to take in the moments. Douglas was, was driving very, focused. <laughs> I was like, honey, look at this. Oh my gosh, look at that. He's like, I'm driving. Um, it's one of those drives. I highly recommend it, but you've got to focus. Um, so as we were driving through the Alps, we stopped in this cute little ski town about a two hour hours outside of Alpa de Hughes. And we had um, a great lunch and it was just so charming and beautiful and just, again, magical, these moments. And then we got back into the car, drove up to the Alps, and then you get here and the last little voyage is like these little hairpin turns and you're just hanging on for dear life you're like wow and then you reach kind of the summit and I'm going to talk a lot about that today and then there's this beautiful resort area there's just little chalets everywhere there's ski lifts everywhere I believe someone told me it was like the founding it's like the origin of the actual gondola or the ski lift this is where it happened um, I don't know if that's true but it could be it sounds good right it's a good story so um we ended up kind of taking we got in late it was it was dark and um we kind of just got settled in a lot of you followed me on instagram and we were showing you kind of how we left the four seasons in milan and had a penthouse amazing you know sprawling apartment and a terrace and then we came into our little we call it the love shack and it's a one bedroom tiny maybe 300 square feet um and we walked in we're like wow but honestly we walked in i'm like this is skiing this is how it's done it was tiny it was cozy and then we woke up in the morning and we opened our drapes and saw these amazing mountains outside of our door and we're like this is what it's all about so we have loved our little love shack it's been amazing um we really nestled in we've gotten quite comfortable there we went to the market across the street there's a little market and they have the most amazing food I mean, I could really, my old self could really go crazy. <laughs> I mean, pastries, the way they eat here is unbelievable. Pastries, croissants, I mean, they're everywhere. And um, so we we got our, you know, yogurts and our, our fruit, made a little fruit basket and some pastries and, and got it all. And eggs, the eggs were so good. The apple was like the most delicious apple ever. I don't know what it is, um, but they all have a little French flag. The bananas, the apples, they're very proud of their produce and they should be because they were, I mean, it was like the best apple I've ever had. So we, um, we got nestled in, made um, made the best of it, and have really fallen in love with it. Uh, our first morning, we got up, we went for a long walk. We just wanted to see kind of where we were, because when we got here, it was dark. So we kind of walked through the city. It was very quiet. Um, we were kind of the only ones out there. It was like 6.30 in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, I realized they wake up later and they eat later. So we kind of had the, it was just, beautiful walking around. We found this really cute little cafe and had cappuccino and croissants. I had a chocolate croissant. Uh, Douglas had a regular croissant and I'm just like, we're in France. We're in the Alps. We're having cappuccino. We're eating croissants. Life is good. I'm just taking in the moment, even a simple breakfast. Um, so then we kind of headed back. We went and got our skis. You know, it's a whole thing when you're skiing, like checking in. You gotta go get fitted, your boots, your skis, your poles. And then you gotta truck and find the right lift to get the lift to the to the next lift, to get to the summit that you wanna get to. And But once you arrive, it is just so worth it. And I think a lot of people don't ski because it's a whole thing. I mean, it's not a sport of ease, right? It's a lot of lugging stuff and suiting up and, and dressing and layering, um, but it is worth it. So that's what we did the beginning of our first day all morning is kind of getting ready getting everybody suited up then we made our voyage to the mountain and then we got up that first lift and you get to that first summit and you look around and i was just in awe it was awe inspiring my mouth was basically open i was like 
what? And, and we're only at half of the mountain, you know, we haven't even peaked. And you just, I had to stop and I just had to take it in. And I was just like, this is majestic. This is unbelievable. I can't even capture a picture to send home to my kids. It's, it doesn't give it justice. So I stood there on top of that mountain for a good bit and just took it in, took in, you know, the grandeur of this and just what God has created. And that's what keeps hitting me as I go down these slopes and I'm like, you just see creation and there's a scripture that says all creation you know praises him and i feel like these mountains kind of show his glory they show his power they show his majesty and i think that's what's just been sitting in my mind as i've walked through this beautiful little ski town um so anyway we we skied and then we went to our first concert our venue and i had never experienced this before uh, douglas has been to tomorrowland before um, so I didn't know what to expect. So I took you with me on Instagram at chatting with Chaz and we went into this first venue. And again, it was like in an igloo and this amazing stage and they have fireworks and they have light shows. And, and then the music was so loud. I don't know if you know this about me, but the louder, the better. I love loud music. I want to feel it. I, I just love it. So I was in my element. I'm also in my element on skis. So I'm like two of my favorite things skiing and music it's the perfect match so i was just sitting there you know everybody's dancing around me i'm in ski boots you can't really dance in ski boots so i'm just kind of doing this and i'm just so happy again the smile on my face i i mean i just can't even believe it so really had a wonderful time um, i'm looking at douglas i'm looking at his kids i'm like we're in the alps like this is crazy so that was fantastic went for a great dinner that night just kind of sharing what we did and how to navigate this there's tons of hotels here uh, we kind of were late on board kind of um, when we booked this trip. So we went for the VRBO route. I do think that was the right route though. I will tell you because it's just nice to settle in. You have a kitchen. I was cooking eggs yesterday and I really feel like that's the right route. So, um, but you could do a hotel or you could do a VRBO. Um, and there's lots of options. There's so many options. I mean, there's lots of different communities within Alpe de Hughes, and we kind of went to some yesterday in little villages, I would say. So you wouldn't have a problem finding a place to stay. There's so many accommodations. Um, and we're kind of scoping it out if we do this again. We're like, okay, that would be a great place. This would be a great place. This is right on a lift that we like. So we're gonna try to get more of the scoop and we'll definitely do a highlight on Chatting with Chaz on our Instagram. Um, so you can follow along there. Make sure you're following along because a lot of stuff will kind of live there once this podcast is wrapped up. Okay, so again, just tons of skiing. A lot of you don't know, I love to ski. I've only skied, you know, in America. I've only skied, I've skied um, Vermont. That's where I started and learned only a couple times and then uh, went out west, Winter Park, um, went to Steamboat, Park City, Deer Valley. That's kind of where I skied. I feel like it comes naturally to me and I absolutely love it. It is my favorite sport, 100% more than biking, running, walking. I do like walking, but I would say skiing. If, if I could just live on skis, little fun fact, when I was 18, I came out of episode one. I thought, you know what? This would be the time I could do whatever I want. I'm not in college. I think I'm going to move to Colorado and be a ski instructor. That did not happen, but that's kind of how much I've loved this. I love snow. I love winter sports. So I'm just, I could not be happier. Um, anyway, a lot of you have asked, what, you know, how are this, the slopes compared to the States? I would say they're definitely more aggressive here. Um, so a green here is like a blue in the States. A blue here is kind of venturing into more difficult. And then they have something called red, which I've never experienced that in the States. It's called difficult. And then their black is very difficult. So we might venture onto reds today and just kind of check it out. I feel like they're all kind of the same. The only thing I don't really enjoy is moguls. So I like to stay off those. It kind of messes with my knees. Um, but we're going to hit it. Um, like I said, we're here with Douglas's kids, uh, two of his three kids and, um, his son especially loves to ski. So I've been kind of tagging with him and he's kind of been showing us the routes and we've had a really great time and it's been great getting to know his kids on a better level. It's, it's been fantastic. We've had a great time. So, uh, again, back to the skiing, I would say it's a little bit more difficult, the grade of the land, this, you know, it's a little steeper. And this morning, you know, we had a lot of rain yesterday. We took 
took the day off yesterday, just did some shopping and lunch and exploring. Um, but the rain came and then the ice came today. So the slopes are a little bit icy today, uh, but not terrible. So that's kind of the skiing. Um, I do think it is a difficult place to get to. So I, we flew in, flew in again from Milan. You can fly into Paris. You can also take a train um, from, I believe, Milan um, to a community close by and then get here. There's, there's lots of different ways to get here and you can find that very easily when you Google it. Um, okay, so now our next stop we're gonna wrap up travel here and then I wanna talk about what's been impressed on me since I've been here and I think it will inspire you. So we are gonna leave here tomorrow. This is our last day. So we're gonna hit the slopes hard today. I really wanna explore a part of the mountain that we haven't explored kind of over my left shoulder. Um, and I think the trails are a little bit higher, a little bit steeper. Maybe the view is gonna be a little more spectacular. So I can't imagine beating this view. I mean, this view is amazing. But we are gonna venture out today. Um, and then we're gonna just hit the slopes hard. And then tonight, we're gonna to go to some of the main stages, which we haven't been, Douglas and I, his kids have been um, in the main stages of Tomorrowland are just like um, in the heart of the community. They have these huge, they've erected these massive tents that feel like buildings. And then they have like these amazing light shows and it should be really fun. So we're going to do that tonight, our last night. We're going to, we have reservations for a late dinner at a great restaurant that a lot of people, oh, my leg is falling asleep, um, have recommended. And so we are going to um, do that tonight start packing up which is so sad I hate to leave here but it's not a terrible thing because we'll be heading to Paris so um, I'm sorry I'm just trying to get situated here uh, we're gonna head to Paris on Friday what is the day no on Wednesday on Wednesday morning so tomorrow morning this podcast will have dropped and we will be traveling it'll be a travel day so make sure you follow along at chatting with Chaz because we're sharing all the travel as we go and I'm also recording days in the life so you could see a little bit more because I'm really trying to stay in the moment because this is such a spectacular trip and I'm just doing little videos instead of being on Instagram all day um, so we'll be headed to Paris we're going to the same hotel that we went to when we were in Paris in December last year year. I fell in love with this hotel. It's probably the most beautiful hotel I've ever stayed at and seen. Um, it's the Four Seasons in Paris and it was such an incredible experience. One of the cool things about that hotel when we checked in, first of all, just, just how their customer service, I'm a big customer service girl, is like next level. It's unbelievable. I kind of was taking notes and learning. Um, but then when we got to the room, it was a beautiful suite and I was kind of opening the drapes, beautiful drapery. And I was so, you know, touched by the way of all, all the details in the room. Like they just do it right in Paris. Every detail is thoughtful and meaningful and like necessary. Do you know what I mean? They just do it right. So I was opening the drapery and when I opened the last window, the Eiffel Tower was right there. And I just was overwhelmed. I teared up. I think I might've cried. I was like, oh my gosh, it's right there. It's right there. I was so blown away. You know, the Eiffel Tower is so iconic. Um, so something I always wanted to see. And then there it was right in our window. Again, like I was talking about with this trip, it's just, I never dreamed that I would ever see it. I just didn't. I didn't dream big. And um, so we opened that window and I was like, oh, and I told Douglas, I'm like, this is unbelievable. Again, surreal. I never dreamed it. And he's like, why? Why don't you dream big? And I'm like, I just, I just never did. I guess I didn't have the courage to dream that big. So there we are. We had an amazing time in Paris. We, you know, took a beautiful boat ride in front of the Eiffel Tower, a private cruise, and we shopped and we meandered through Paris and we went to the Eiffel Tower and, you know, we went to all these amazing cafes. We had the best hot chocolate ever at the Four Seasons and another place um, in this little neighborhood in Paris. We just really seized the moment. And, uh, so he's like, if we're flying back, we have to fly out of Paris or Milan. Let's just go to Paris and then we'll spend a couple days. I mean, it is the weekend, so we may as well just go there, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and leave Saturday. So we decided to extend the trip a little bit and do Paris. So when we get to Paris, we just have some great reservations. There's a, a really great restaurant called Giraffe. Um, so if you're visiting Paris, I would put that on your list. And when you're in Giraffe, you have a view of the Eiffel Tower at dinner and it's spectacular. It's stunning. Uh, the design of that restaurant is next level and the food is fantastic. 
you know, we really do enjoy, you know, a great meal and but more so than a great meal, we enjoy kind of the, the beauty of the restaurant. And so we kind of choose places that are beautiful. And that's not hard to do when you're in Paris. Everything is beautiful because every detail is thoughtful. And that's that was what I was impressed about. I'm super inspired as we've been making these trips. You know, we went to Italy last year for two weeks and then to Paris. Now this trip, and I really realize how much travel has inspired me. In fact, when I went to market in January, um, I had gone, you know, to, like I said, a two week trip all through Italy. We hit Amsterdam, we hit France, um, Barcelona, Spain. I was so inspired that a lot of my shopping at market was inspired by that trip and I have a collection that's going to be launching at Linen and Flax, the Positano collection. And then we have all these really cool collections. We're having a travel collection because I was so inspired and I really think that's what's come out of a lot of this is how it has opened me up to more um, beautiful design, uh, classic design, um, also just the meaningful design that I've seen in different countries and, and how they serve from a uh, tabletop to, you know, um, to a coffee table, you know, everything is thoughtful. And I've really brought that back home and I brought it to Linden and Flax and I brought it to our website where you can shop it. So stay tuned for some of those collections. They're going to be launching very soon. I know a lot of them have already come in before I left on this trip. I saw, I'm like, oh, that's for the Positano collection. That's for the travel collection. And I'm thinking about what I want to bring home from this trip. And I've got some ideas, but I think what has just kind of moved me here as far as an aesthetic is just it's natural you know it's it's not um made up you know nothing is about you know fine china here it's about your view and like what your view is and and how you see it and i think douglas and i were talking if you lived here you probably wake up and you're 10 you don't even see these mountains anymore it's just your background but then you come here from another place from the u.s and you're like this is spectacular this is not normal this is unreal you know and i think that's what I want to impress with you today, like don't take your view for granted. I don't know what your view is. It might be your children. It might be your job. It might be what's outside of your window, but don't take it for granted. And I'm sure there's things in the States that we wake up to that we don't really appreciate either because we're used to it. So I think that's something that has kind of hit me. The other thing that has hit me is, you know, Whenever we climb to a summit or yesterday or the day before we went to a different venue and it was at a different mountain, a higher peak, whenever we get there, the view's a little different. And I always look back. It's like what I've been doing. If we, if we get on a lift, I look back when we get to the top of the lift. Yesterday we scaled a mountain and we literally scaled it. We walked up the mountain because the lift's closed. And as we were walking up, I just looked back and I wanted to see how far we had come. And I wanted to see, you know, um, the progress we made and it just hit me you know we're all climbing mountains in our life and they're hard you know sometimes you're going to be out of breath and sometimes you need to stop and pause and catch your breath and but sometimes if you just keep looking up you don't really see how far you've come and i know we don't always want to look back but sometimes i think we should look back and we should look at our progress and we should say wow i did that as we were scaling a mountain yesterday i looked back and i was like we did that you know that was hard and i think when i was having that moment i thought of myself like yeah yeah yeah, Chaz, you've climbed some mountains. You've gone through the hard things. You're going through the hard things. And there's still a long way to go. I still know I have a peak to arrive to. There's another summit, but it feels good to be at this summit. And so maybe there's, there's summits in life. And right now I'm sitting on one. And it was a lot to get to here today. But we got here. But then I see in my view, there's more to go. There's another journey. And so it doesn't end with, I am like so happy. I feel on top of the world. I might even name this podcast on top of the world. But then part of me is is thinking it should be about dreaming bigger than I've ever dreamed. Because I never dreamed I'd be sitting here doing a podcast from the Alps. A year ago, if you told me this was going to happen, I would say, what are you talking about? You are crazy. I never dreamed I would be here, not only doing a podcast, something I dreamed about for years, doing it from the French Alps. Remember, I was a girl who didn't have a passport and I was afraid to fly. And here I am across the ocean, across a mountain range on top of the French Alps. If you think about that, that's looking back. That's looking back and saying, you are a different person than you were a year ago. And I thought I was doing great a year ago. I think I'm doing great today, but I'm excited 
to see what that peak looks like. So I'm going to keep climbing. I'm going to occasionally look back and be like, okay, girl, good job. And I'm going to keep climbing because there's more summits. So I don't know where you are in your journey. Maybe you're at the beginning. Maybe you're at the, the base of the mountain and you're like, I'm looking up and it looks so steep. It looks so hard. How am I going to do this? You can do it because you can do hard things one step at a time. You plant your foot and you go, you plant your foot and you go, and then you get to a place where you can breathe. You can catch your breath. You can sit for a minute and you can say, okay, I did that. And then you look up and you say, okay, I got this because I did that. And then you stop and you look at your view. And when you look at your view and you see your children are happy or your career is thriving or, you know, you're in a mentally healthy place, um, you're like, wow, look what I did. So I can get to the rest of that. I can keep climbing and I can get to another summit. And that's what I would encourage you today. That's my inspiration of the day that you will be climbing mountains and I don't know where you are on that mountain, but keep going. Um, occasionally stop and breathe and occasionally look back and see how far you've come. The other thing, lastly, in closing, I would say that has impressed me is like I started with this, it's the majesty of these mountains. It's the creation. And there, for creation to happen, there has to be a creator. And I just keep looking at the creator. And I didn't climb these mountains alone. You know, I climbed with him. He was before me and I was following. And I think if the creator of these mountains, of these Alps, like he created them, like, like the world was created in seven days, he can handle my life. He can handle my journey. If he can, if this is his artwork and we are his artwork and we are, the scripture says we are his workmanship, imagine what he can do with your life. So lean into him, follow him as you climb, reach out to him and say, okay, I don't know if I could do this, but I know you can and you will arrive to your summit. And that's how I'll close with this. There's no doubt when you sit on the top of this mountain that there is a creator and we were created for his purpose and his pleasure. And what were you created for? Let's climb together and see, and let's reach our summit and discover our best self. I'm in the midst of it and I'm really liking it. And it's been amazing. Also, the fact that I am here and healthy, also can't even believe it. Um, there's so much to be grateful for. So I leave you today being grateful, happy, um, and overwhelmed with what God can do in a willing life that leans in, keeps climbing, and never gives up. Okay. Let's give him a little pan before I go. I'll just pan the camera around. Okay. And then you can say goodbye to everybody. Okay. So am I stopping yeah, talking? Talk, okay. I get it. This leg is asleep. Let me see here. <laughs> okay. So we're going to give you a pan of the beautiful view that I see his creation it's unreal and take it in and take a breath and enjoy that uh, visit us next time chatting with Chaz. We're doing an episode from Paris. So that'll be our next episode. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but it'll be something I'm sure moving that I have seen and that I have fallen in love with. It is the city of love. It's the city of light. And I'm really excited to go again and explore more. I'll take you along. So join me again next week, chatting with Chaz, the Paris edition. And I'm going to go ski down this mountain now. It was great chatting with you. Mwah! Au revoir.